Oh, yeah. yeah. We got it all. We got water, nicotine, and caffeine. So we're ready to go. Perfect. Um, I kind of violated podcast rules as we started to converse, conversate as I was setting up and told some stories and stuff. And it's funny because you want to limit conversation because before you know it, a bunch of good material comes out in the first 10 minutes, just where you're getting to know, while you're getting to know each other and and setting up the equipment. But uh, some of that stuff we'll have to revisit a little bit, but kind of like I told you guys, you know, how I like to run my show. It's just a conversation. You know, my whole podcast forum came to life based around a freedom movement because people saw me get fired as a police officer over the COVID stuff. And I don't know, did you guys follow that story at the time or see that happen? I did. And it was crazy. And, uh, you know, I ended up going on a bunch of different shows and people liked hearing my message and my perspectives and it just led into my own show. So in the beginning, we were very freedom focused because 2020 was a year where, I mean, our freedom, everybody that had, that shared our mindset and our ideology, we were, we were battling for freedom. Yeah. But I would say over the last maybe year to 18 months, it seems like that stuff is kind of waned a little bit and it's not as big of an issue that's front and center anymore. Right not in your hip in your face anymore yeah but the but the truth is there's still a lot of people that are still ha- feeling the fallout exactly from standing up for themselves two three years ago um are you guys familiar with a company in marysville called spoon and straw it's a it's a little place that makes fruit bowls and she just blends up different fruits and puts you know granola and stuff on them i'm gonna have her on next week because here she is single mama four looking at like a hundred thousand dollars of backed fines because her employees didn't wear a mask, you know? And then, like I said, before we started recording, my gym got a cease and desist order last week because I'm out of compliance with a zoning regulation that wasn't brought to my attention for 12 years. And so I've been thinking like, um, you know, Tyler Thomas, he's the one that said, Hey guy, Hey Greg, the guys from docs and they're still getting fucked. And their story should be told on the podcast. And I'm like, you know what? Let's go back to our roots. Let's start spreading freedom and defiance. And let's start telling people stories. Because what inevitably will happen with this show, someone somewhere will have walked a path very similar to what you guys are walking now and probably have some ideas or some solutions or just even support, you know, even coming to this establishment and buying a beer in support of the freedom movement is something that is empowering to you guys. And so we'll get into all of this. And, uh, you know, I always put in the show notes below, like your contact info or the address to the bar, all this stuff. So people can rally behind you and support it. Um, but going into it, let's just introduce yourselves, kind of how you came to, to own this place, what this place represents. And then we'll just go down all the rabbit holes of, of the county trying to fuck you out of your livelihood. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Greg. Good. Um, you know, my first interest in this bar goes back a long time ago. Um, I used to be a gym rat, and uh, there were two guys in there that were very built. And one of them was related to Jim Young, the owner of Doc's Rivers, Doc's Tavern here. Okay. And uh, I talked to him, you know, I said, if you ever have any influence or anything, I'd be interested in buying that bar. And the guy says, you know, I never will have that influence. But anyway, that's where my first interest in this little tavern was. Going ahead, the bar hit the market for, what was it, about $750,000. They lowered the price initially down to, I think it was seven ten, And we tied the property up at that point. What year was this? this- 2019. 19, early oh, okay. 2019. Yeah. And uh, this place needed a lot of work. Yeah. And it took a lot of money. It was a lot bigger project than we ever dreamed it would be. Isn't that the case with all projects? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and it took about 18 months to polish this turd. 
and to make it what it is now. It's very nice, respectable, clean, smells good. I just noticed that your bathrooms are the nicest bathroom I've ever been in inside of what would be considered a, a bar or a tavern. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. They're very prideful and upkeep and taking care of the place. My the yeah. ladies appreciate that for sure. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, after we did that, I we had no I, no plan to open this place. Our plan was to fix it up and sell it. Oh, you're going to flip it. Yep. Okay. And, and for listeners, I mean, we are literally the back of the, the deck butts up against the Pilchuck River. It's a beautiful little place here in Machias, Washington. And, and again, like as I sit here, I can see the house I grew up in from where I sit right now. So I'm very familiar with this place and it's powerful and yeah. it's, uh, it's cool to see that Initially, it was just an idea to flip and make some money, but you started to kind of fall in love with it, it sounds like. That's exactly what happened. Yep. Every day we were out here, people would come in here and say, hey, I had my first beer on there 50 years ago. As we were building. As we were polishing the place, it. getting uh-huh. it ready. And, uh, you know, ultimately, we all fell in love with it. Yeah. We fell in love with the community. And uh, Ken was out here every day. Brad was working full time at Boeing and doing this too. Uh huh. And it just it grew on us, and we had to find out if we could even get a liquor license here. So we made application, went through all the process, all the screening, all the stuff. So even though it was a tavern before you bought it, under new ownership, it's like starting from scratch, huh? Starting literally from scratch. Of course. And it had been closed down for about a year. I see. So it was borderline. Um, But they put us through all the hoops and all the screening, all the criminal background, all the stuff you go through to get a liquor license. And we finally got it. And it... uh, Uh, Yeah, Kenny and I just decided to give it a shot let's see if we can make it work and we got into it and put a lot of work into it and um got it open finally a lot of people started supporting us and and really wanting to come in here and drink beer and when did you guys officially get done with the renovation and then be open for business we we opened august of 2020 okay so yeah like yeah right the worst the worst timing possible for yep. to, for starting a new business. Yep. Okay. We figured COVID mandate would be maybe two weeks, six weeks, something like that, because they were just at that point, they were stringing it out two weeks at a time. We figured it would end. Well, well I wonder why you would think that. Yeah. I'm mean, an optimist. <laughs> yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe, the maybe because they said 10 days to flatten yeah. the curve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, and I mean, everybody thought that. You know, like I I was a small business owner at the time, but I was also a police officer. So I always had that like comfort blanket over me, you know, and it's like, okay, I'll shut my gym down and and see what's kind of what's going on with this. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of us, it didn't take too long before you would just look at what was deemed essential and what wasn't. And it's like, I can't get together and, and share a beer or a meal with a group of my friends, but I can go to Walmart. You know what I mean? Like all of these or, or a big one for me was I can't, I can't train. I can't work out with a group of my friends, but if, if the little sticker on the back of my car expires, I can go wait in line at the DMV or uh, the, the auto licensing place. And I called one of those places. I go, are you guys deemed essential? Because my tabs on my truck just expired. They said, yeah, all, all government businesses are deemed essential. So we're open. And that was the that was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. I said, if this is so deadly that everybody has to shut everything down, but so they can get their sixty five dollars for a little green sticker, yeah, right, right. Yeah. my gym's now open. You know. So how did how did that affect? Like, what what was walking that path like for this place being told to shut down? Did you out of the gates comply a little bit? We, or? we did. Yeah, we took it pretty seriously initially for probably first three or four weeks okay and i and yeah. that's the thing i think almost all reasonable people did because mm-hmm. yeah. this right. was this was new let's see what's mm-hmm. going on yeah. like for anyone that wanted to call us oh you're grandma killers and you don't trust the science it's like no we just have common sense right. you know and again like how long can you for a place that you guys just invested all this money all this time into right. 
it's not feasible to just say, okay, we'll just put it on the back burner for a year and revisit it later. And for the government agencies that were telling us to do that, none of those motherfuckers have ever been an entrepreneur. Right, exactly. Their paycheck comes from stealing our money, so they're fine. They're content. Exactly. But for the people that have to rely on customers and and your day-to-day operations and selling a product or selling an experience or selling fitness like I do, that's a day-to-day grind. And if that gets lost, and it doesn't take long before you're upside down and and you're strapped. You know, you remember they were saying, uh, what was the word they were saying? They were allowing businesses to um, like defer their rent or defer their mortgages. Yeah. And then after six months, you had to pay the amount in full. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah. let me let me explain how math works, yeah. <laughs> you know? And so after those three or four weeks, you guys kind of came to that same, like you started feeling this, something's off here. Yeah. Okay, yep. and get a little closer on that. Yep. Um, yeah, we just, we, we like you were saying, you, you see all these other essential businesses or entities you know, being able to do what they need to do and and yet they want to tell us to shut everything down or restrict access make everybody sit outside even when it's raining yeah we live in washington all right uh, yeah. outside yeah. is not super feasible right. all the time it's not working it's yeah not work. so after a while we just said fuck it we're we're gonna open it up and you know, initially we still kept people off of the bar. We had people, lots of tables in here, and we just we made it work inside. I think at the time it was supposed to be everybody sitting outside, mm-hmm. but we allowed people inside. And um, was the mask mandate going crazy yet? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yep. Um, and after we took that seriously initially as well. Um, we, we followed all the guidelines for the first three or four weeks. And then we kind of gradually worked our way into just saying, fuck it. And uh, after a while, it was like just open bar. <laughs> well, and, and, and here's the most ironic thing. I don't care if it's Ebola. And if you catch it, you die. Right. Right. If a grown ass man wants to say, hey, you know what? I want to go into docks and have a beer tonight. There's some shit going around. I might get real sick. Yeah. We have the freedom to do that. Right. We're not, we're right. not their babysitters. No. And yeah. if you want to stay home and stay safe, yeah. feel free to do that as well. Yeah. Like no one's going to get on anyone's case for wearing a mask or for isolating yourself. Like you do you, right. but you doing you doesn't involve you telling us what to do either. Mm-hmm. You know? So how did it go from, okay, if you, if you're packed in here, Obviously, the, the, the community is in support, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. And, and, it, and it was. <laughs> and how we, long? Had, we had a lot of support during that time. Yeah. Sure. I mean, and, and I'm sure we'll go into it, but you guys became kind of like the the hub of freedom in Snohomish County, in you know? Ways, yeah. For sure, man. I remember I came here and, and talked one night to a giant group of people. Yes. I don't know, were you guys even here that I night? I was here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was awesome. Yeah, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you guys kind of became like the face of defiance and standing up for yourself in the county. And that was cool, man. Um, so what was it like from, okay, this doesn't make sense. We're going to go ahead and start offering services and opening up our bar to you guys are public enemy number one. Uh, I think initially it didn't really seem that way until, until somebody ratted us out, I guess. But it, there was a good stretch of time where we had... We had Lots of weekends where we got a lot of people in here. We had bands playing, um, people having fun. You know, really appreciative of being able to come in here and just interact with people. But dude, I can tell you, like, when nothing, when people's norm was completely destroyed mm-hmm. and they couldn't go get a workout in or they couldn't go have a beer with a friend, like. People started, their mental health started to suffer too. Exactly. Because I'm sure you guys heard this all the time. It's like, man, just being able to have like a little sense of normal is, is super important for me right now. Cause our gym got that all the time. Yeah. We had had people that all a younger group just turned 21. A lot of them in their early twenties. A couple of them came up to me at the bar in, in tears just saying, man, thank you. 
thank you for allowing us to do this because I mean, they've been stuck in their houses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like literally over a year. Some, some of them two years. And it's crazy that people actually did that to themselves yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. You know, but, but the sad part is, is like most of our society and me included to a certain extent, we thought the government as fucked up as it was and how hard they rape us on taxes and all the bullshit that the government is always partaking in. At the end of the day, I still thought like, man, they have the people's best interests in mind. You know, I've done a 180 on that since mm -hmm. I think they're out to get us all. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think that's what kind of made this transition a little tough for me because it's like, man, the, our own government is ruining everybody's lives and no one's really willing to very few people are, are, are not only able to see it, but once they do see it, stand up against yeah, it. Because, yeah. I mean, how many people did you guys talk to through that period? that came to the same conclusions that we came to, but were very reluctant to be vocal about it or yeah. to stand up against it. Right. You there, know, there's a lot, a ton yeah. of them, a ton of them. Mm -hmm. They're just, you know, the thing, when we opened up, I'd just sit here and watch the door looking for liquor control agents to come in and, you know, bust us or do whatever they potentially could do. What a disgusting human being. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I <laughs> mean, we'll, we'll go into that yeah. in a minute. <laughs> but people would walk in with a mask on. They'd look around. They'd just rip that sucker right off their face. Yeah. You know, they're 21 years of old, 21 years old to be in here in the first place. They're exactly. adults. We can't practice medicine and make them wear a mask. Well, and, and, and man... People are sitting around a table and they're pulling their mask down to take a bite of food or to have a drink in yeah. their beer. It's like, what are this is fucking charades everybody's playing? Yeah. And that's what it is. Exactly. It's it's a game of charades that's being orchestrated by the US government. That is not about health and safety. No. It's just foolish, you know? Totally. And it's sad that like, I mean, we still see it today. People driving around with their mask on and stuff. Yeah. And it's yeah. like outside on the trail. <laughs> Yeah, dude. And it's like, man, they literally broke some people's brains. They did. Like brainwashed them to the point where like, I feel like there's no coming back. Yeah. You know? No, and you know, seeing the similarities not only between my previous run-in with the government, but with, with what I'm dealing with now, it's like, you're going to have this guy that works for, in my case, it's code enforcement, or in your case, it's liquor control board. And they're going to sneak in here. They're going to get a look at what's going on. Yeah. Maybe they'll snap some pictures and then they'll go back and write their report up yep. and it's to fuck you. Exactly. Right. And That's it's like exactly what they did. And this yeah. is the problem that these motherfuckers need to realize. It's like, I don't care if you're just doing your job. If you're just, oh, you know what? This is I, I'm tasked to go out there and, and find businesses that are out of compliance. It's nothing personal. I was told that last week. Like this isn't. This is a very informal proceeding. I said, you might feel like it's informal. My entire livelihood's on the line right, right. now. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what these men need to realize is if you come into an establishment, and I don't care if you're under the authority of whatever section of the government, if what your intentions are is to ruin my life, you got to understand something. We're going to be at war with each other. Yeah, Like, I'm not just going to take a knee and, and let go of everything that I've worked for because one man told me that I need to do that. And like, people need to start being held responsible for when, when they're doing this to these companies and these businesses. Exactly. Um, so is yeah. that what ended up happening then? Undercover agents mm -hmm. yeah. busted the yeah. tavern on the Pilchuck River? All right. I think initially somebody, like I said, ratted us out. Anonymous. They're, yeah, they're, they're able to stay, remain anonymous. Oh, yeah. oh it's anonymously. Yeah. I'm fucking shocked <laughs> to right. hear that. Mm -hmm. That's just like all the guys that want to fight me over Instagram. And I have a gym <laughs> right up the street with public, with, an, with a, a website with times posted that I'm training. And not once has anyone ever shown up and said something like that. And it's the same thing everywhere. Yeah. You know, whoever had a problem with you guys here, Maybe they could have been like, hey, Rad, like, can we talk about what you're doing right now? Because I'm, I'm concerned about the community. 
You know, like, right. oh, you mean be a man or be a normal human being? No, everything's anonymous and it's because everybody lacks courage now. Yeah. Like if I got a fucking problem with you, we could talk about it. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. All right, I'm getting fired up. I need to calm down a little bit. All right. Keep going. <laughs> I love it. No, but it's it's so easy to get fired up because like the this country is literally founded on defiance. Exactly. You know, I say it often on the show. The reason you're sitting right here is because there was a group of men at one time that said, you know what? Fuck the king and fuck his taxes. Right. That's right. And I'm willing to go to war over that. And now we have this beautiful country that we call America because a group of people came to that conclusion. And then not only did they come to that conclusion, but they were willing to put the action in to follow what they believed in their heart to be the best path forward. And it involved a lot of violence and a lot of hardship and a lot of warfare. But that's because they felt it was important. That's right. And now it's our time. You know, And, and if we just let the government keep stomping us under their boot, what are we, what message are we, are we teaching our children? Yeah. That's what country are we leaving them? This yeah. is a fight that's worth having, you know? Absolutely. I mean, how old are you? I think we're about the same age. I'm 45. Okay. I'm 42. And it's like, one of my biggest fears is when I'm an 80 year old man, looking back, if we're in some communist regime being like, fuck man, I didn't do what I could have done. Mm-hmm. And the first step for all of this is what we're doing right now. Just simply having the conversation, putting it out to the universe, people will consume this and people will feel, I mean, there's a lot of people who love the show and then there's some people that hate it, but as long as they're getting downloads, I'm happy, right? (laughs) Absolutely. But the truth is like, it starts with an information war and it starts with, with sharing our ideas and it's in, in defiance is something that like, if people feel empowered and they see other people doing it. You know, I say I have a shirt that says courage is contagious because very few men or women are willing to step out in front and be that first person to take that courageous step. You guys are are obviously some of the small percentage of men that are willing to do that. But a lot of men, when they see someone else take that first step of courage, they're like, dude, that looks that something feels right about right. that. Mm-hmm. And then they take that step and then someone sees them and it becomes it's contagious. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, I say it all the time on the show just because there's some FBI agent listening, taking field notes right now. But uh, I don't want to have to have some violent revolution to take our country back. I don't know who would. We can take our, I, I did 10 years in warfare. I don't want my children to be subjected to that. I don't want our communities. When you're in a war torn country, you can't even go to the grocery store. You need a 16 man team. You need to have an operations order. You need to have a plan. Like everything you do is exhausting because your safety is paramount. Nobody wants that here. We just want to change the trajectory of our, of our country to where man, you do you and I do me. And if everybody could come to terms with that, I think we could move forward. But dude, like they won't let that happen. You know? What was it? So, you know, you, you got reported liquor control started doing undercover operations. Yep. Um, what was the initial first contact like with them? Well, I, I'm not sure if they actually did uh, undercover operations initially. They, they came in after getting their uh, somebody ratted us out. So that initiated their investigation. So they came in, announced themselves and, and noticed that nobody in here was wearing masks. We weren't wearing masks. We didn't, we weren't following their protocol. I would receive a call from our enforcement officer. Should I name him? Uh, If you want to. Matthew Stevenson. Okay. And he said, we've had another report that you guys aren't complying with the COVID mandates. And in the next week or so, we're going to be in and check to make sure that you are. Well, two weeks ago by, three weeks ago by, wouldn't hear anything. And we had adults here. We treated them like they were adults. If you want to wear a mask, you're welcome to. If you want to stay six feet away from people, stay six feet away from people. And part we're, of our argument here is that we're not doctors. We're not legally able to actually prescribe 
people to wear masks and and social distance. Yeah. So we don't have a medical license to practice medicine. What they demanded us to do when they gave us our first violation, they accused us of a crime, endangering public safety. Oh, geez. And it's, that's, that's not that's just us. Right that's yeah. every restaurant, every bar in the state of Washington that got caught out of compliance. I like okay. control. I mean, uh, fuck, man. I was a law enforcement officer for a long time. And the way that you write your, your probable cause statement to basically, if you as a police officer say, I believe this person committed this crime and this is why. Right. Right. I would love to see the probable cause statement on how you guys are publicly endangering a room full of adults that are here voluntarily. Right. Like a lot of lawyers would have a heyday with that. But but the unfortunate part is, is like the judges and the prosecutors and the 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 head of the liquor control board. They're all butt buddies and they're all in bed together. And so it's like, yeah. So when you see these things that legally it, it, it should be an absolute breeze to litigate this case oh, yeah. for yeah. you guys right. to be able to just move forward or have it dropped. Nope. They're all butt buddies and they're all in bed together. And exactly. it's like they know what's right and what's wrong, but it's not about what's right or what's wrong anymore. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's about Doc's Tavern said no to us. Right. So watch this. Right. That's you exactly know? what's happened. We sent... We had a group working with this called the Constitutional Law Group initially, and they had put together some papers, 30, I think it was 30 pages altogether, that we mailed to liquor control on two occasions. They've yet to acknowledge those. Of course. Why would they? But they've acknowledged two parts out of three of the first one we sent in, and they've treated it as a file of request and they send information out. Initially, well, the biggest part that we requested from them was proof of their authority to do what they're doing. Yeah. And that's what's been missing. They haven't been able to send anything back in regards to their authority. Well, in a lot of the different agencies, and, and this is why I went viral back in 2020, it's just this perceived authority. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, a lot, a lot of, is. a lot of jurisdictions were using their cops to go in and, and shut down businesses. Right. And, and luckily that didn't, I mean, I didn't see that in Snohomish County. And I think because at a sheriff, Adam yep. Fortney is actually a man of honor he is. and he stood behind his citizens. Exactly. But, constitution. Yeah. I stood behind the constitution. He, he but, came here and spent two and a half hours with us. Nice. And I really believe if we hadn't had that meeting, and if he hadn't reached out to Captain Dixon at Liquor Control, they would have just squished us. 100%. And, and I've said this before. There's a good chance I'm alive because of Adam Fortney. Because yeah. when they, I was told the same thing, shut your gym down, you're in violation. Um, and again, that perceived authority, what they have to do is they have to look at how your business is structured, and then they can see what how they can bend the rules and kind of circumnavigate the law to go after you so for you guys it's liquor liquor control board has authority yep. over you because you're a tavern so we're going to go that route for me it was l and i labor and industry but like we talked about before i started recording i don't have employees I, me and my wife run the whole gym so now labor and industry actually doesn't have authority over us but regardless when we were getting those letters I mean, I made an Instagram video. I said, we're open. And if anyone doesn't like it, I'm here with my rifle and my body armor and fucking do something about it. And I I mean, it was kind of bizarre. I was hugging my wife goodbye with the feeling and the emotions inside of me like I was going on a deployment to Iraq. Yeah. Because I was like, today might be the day. Because I won't, do you guys know who Ian Smith is? Are you familiar with him? He had the gym in New Jersey. Yeah. And he got arrested. Oh, yeah, yeah. He got Multiple arrested times. a lot of times. Yeah. And me and Ian had become friends because we were like some of the early faces of COVID. I actually talked to him last week. He's like, Hey, if they, if they end up shutting you down, we'll do a freedom rally there this summer. We'll get, we'll get 10,000 people out there, awesome. you know, <laughs> but, but I remember watching Ian get yarded out of his gym in handcuffs. And I told my wife, I said, 
Ian's better at playing the game than I am, but I ain't getting yarded out of my gym in fucking handcuffs. Mm -hmm. And if another man thinks he's going to make a, a spectacle of me on the nightly news, it's it's I'm fighting him to the death. And there's a good chance I'll fucking win. And again, it's not tough guy talk. It's it's just I have an honor inside of me that is not going to allow another man to make me into his spectacle. Right. And I'm sorry that you're a 24 year old deputy that's only been a cop for two years. If you follow the order of a corrupt man to infringe on my personal freedoms, then you are an arm of corruption mm -hmm. and I have no problem fighting you. Yep. And uh, the, the crazy thing is, is almost all police officers behind closed doors, they, they're, they're, they're one of there. us, man. Yeah. Yeah. They're one of us. Mm -hmm. exactly. I was in the profession for 10 years. Half of my peer group is, is still law enforcement. They're us. And uh, it was really, it was disheartening to see a lot of police officers nationwide unwilling to stand up and say that yeah. because the enforcement branch of the government holds the power, not these goons in some suit and an office, Yeah, you know? Um, so when, when they said that you were out of compliance and they started like seeing, oh, these guys aren't listening to us. Is that when they decide like, we're fucking turning the heat up and, and they realize like you are not going to comply. Um, so they, they came in, they wrote up the AVN, met with Kenny and I, um, actually should have had my dad involved with it too. Cause he's, I received a phone call from Matthew Stevenson saying that he wanted to talk with Brad and Ken. And would I share their cell phone number with him? And I said, well, I could give you Ken's, but he never answers his phone. And I gave him Brad's number. And our conversation was over. I hung up. I was going to, I called Brad as fast as I could to give him a heads up that Matthew Stevenson, our code enforcement officer, was going to call him. Well, he had already called him and set up an appointment for the next day at 11 o'clock. Okay. And didn't explain what, what he was going to talk to. He us didn't about tell him. any, either of us anything what was going to happen then when brad was here and ken was here he ambushed him and served him with an administrative violation notice an avn for our first penalty charged us with a crime yeah. endangering public safety and we had no um It's all, it's all good. I, I say it on the show all the time. We do real life, right? Yes. So like if my this kids, our neighbor. <laughs> if, my, if my kids come in screaming or the dogs start barking, guess what? We're not editing it out. And we're at, Doc's, we're at Doc's Tavern and a neighbor just walked in and said, hello. So that's life. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. Well, they just uh, blindsided Brad. They intimidated. Yeah, it was weird because. We had, there was two of them that came in. Um, initially, we sat down at the table. We figured we were just going to have a conversation. Do they have masks on? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Of course>. okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then one of them stood up and stood by the door. And then the, and then the other one, Matthew, got up and kind of stood over Kenny and I and kind of went through the rigmarole of you know, serving the ABN and went over the details and all that. And it just, it, it seemed intimidating yeah. the way that they did it. Um, we didn't really have a chance to, to question or, you know, I think at the time, I think I asked them, what, what gives you the authority to, to do what you're doing with this COVID stuff being that your liquor control and they weren't able to really give us a, a clear answer. Yeah. And of course they didn't have a clear answer because this was all new and arbitrary, you know? Yeah. And it's like the government just appointed itself all this new authority. And, and the weird thing about it is people were like, Oh, well that's because the, the governor enacted the emergency, whatever act. And it's like, Okay, well, if you think that he can just arbitrarily do that whenever he wants and you don't want to question you don't want to question it and you don't want to be able to to be critical of when they do that, like are you really just comfortable allowing the government to give itself just pure autonomy over you at any time? Mm -hmm. And man, a lot of people were. Yeah. 
the, it doesn't make any sense that people are willing to just put all of their trust. Once, once you started watching this take place, people, anyone with their eyes open could just have that like inherent feeling inside of you that something was off, right? you know, mm-hmm. but very, but people didn't want to act on that. And so, you know, he can't even give you a clear answer what his authority is derived under, yet he's charging you with a crime. Right. At that time, was I it... I had no idea that he was charging us with a crime at the time, at when he did it. So, yeah, that... Uh, that was a straight-up ambush. It was, it was. And, bro, that's, that's kind of their MO, right? Because if he, if he just lays it out on the table and lets you know, like, hey, this is why we're coming after you and we're coming after you, he knows that that's going to give you a little bit of an advantage because you can say, okay, now that I know I'm the target, now I, ne- I need to look into this. I need to hire the right lawyers. I need to have the right counter argument, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, they just kind of nonchalantly, like for instance, like the deal, the thing I'm dealing with right now, they just kind of showed up at a county meeting when I was meeting with the planner and slid us a new violation. And they're like, um... This is an amended violation. Okay. And it didn't explain anything. And didn't, and I, I read it. And what they did is they tacked on an additional violation because I haven't had a maximum, maximum occupancy rating for my building. And it's like, Oh, they get, we can get you with one more thing here. Right. That's another $25,000 fine. You know, uh, out of the gates is that what did they come after you guys monetarily did those yeah, orders was, come with a fine option was to pay a, like a five hundred dollar fine and we didn't we didn't do that um have you ever paid at all nope. okay so you have been def, uh, defying everything that, from the very beginning and from from there uh we received i think it was a five-day liquor license suspension being that we didn't pay the fine and they were supposed to come post on our door the uh <clears throat> the, the actual uh, avn well yeah. what does avn stand for what does it do we know it's not if you don't know it's not important but it's basically like uh they'll post it and be like you guys are out of compliance and yeah so did that lead into when they when they took the liquor license for five days do they expect you guys to be shut down or you're like, fuck it, we'll be right. in here and serve water. Yeah. So we had, we had a good number of people uh, show up here. We told a lot of people that we were going to be, have our, our liquor license suspended. And, and uh, so we had, a, a, we told a lot of people. So a lot of people showed up on the day that they were supposed to come. And uh, so they, they came finally and, there was a, a lot of people standing outside the door and they felt intimidated by it. Uh, even though none of us were, none of us had guns. None of us were threatening in any way. And we felt intimidated yeah. because we fucked a small business and now the community is a little upset about it. Right. And now we are the victims. Mm-hmm. Greg, I, I went out. You've seen me walk here. Back then I wasn't as mobile as I am now. I've got a new hip, so I can move a little bit. But I went out. People told me that they were here. They had parked across the street over here, and our neighbor that has caused us nothing but grief. Um, I believe he's probably the anonymous snitch. You got he started his, you got all his the name? crap everywhere. <laughs> but I go out this door, and they're coming across the street. And these two guys, I assume are liquor control board agents. One of them high bumps an elbow. They both have their masks on. And they say, well, we're going to put this notification on your door, this bright orange saying your license is suspended. Then anybody coming in, they'll know. And I said, no, we're going to talk first. We're going to talk about what we can and cannot do during this suspension and then I have some additional things here in a folder and I tried to open it up but um, we're going to talk about these as well we're going to talk and at that point 
one of the guys was going around to put the sticker on the window, and uh, the other guy um, called him back and says, "We're go, we're leaving. We'll, we'll come back with the sheriff, and we'll be back with the police." <laughs> and I said, "That's great. I invited Adam Fortney to be here today." I'm so fucking sick of men that are cowards in their heart. Yeah. Hiding behind their authority, exactly. right? He can't even have a conversation with you guys. Yeah. I'm trying to shut your business down and I feel comfortable taping a fucking notice on your door. But when you want to have a conversation with me, oh, I need the police here. And like, dude, that is so typical. It's it's okay if the phone rings. It's no big deal. <laughs> all good. All good. Yeah. Again, we're, do, we're in a business. So oh, sometimes yeah. phones go off. Mm-hmm. Um, so did they end up coming back with the sheriffs? They, they never did. That's because the sheriff, I guarantee you, they reached out and they said, um, we're, we're public, we're, we're, we're taping up a public notice on a, on a bar and the, the, the guys are coming out and they're talking to us and like, okay, what took place? Because if you went out there with a gun or you went out there with 10 men and surrounded them, okay, maybe now we do have some type of like, you're trying to preclude them from doing their job. Right. And you're and using some type of force or intimidation. Like you went out there with a folder in your hand to, to ask questions. A three right. ring yeah. binder. It's like, Hey, it's your fucking job yeah. to talk to me right. about why you're shutting me down. Nope. I'm going to go get the cops, you know? Um, so if they shut your, if they shut your, or take your liquor license away, so what, can you do BYOB things like that? Um, we have a plan. I'm not sure that <laughs> I want to let them know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, no, and that's but, the thing. It's like with me, with jujitsu, um, I have some different ideas going through my head. And again, I'm not trashing on the County today because I have a meeting this afternoon and we'll see how it all plays out. Right. right. But like, can I start the church of jujitsu? And, and, and during this, yeah. this hour of the evening, we're here in, in to worship the the powers of jujitsu right exactly. or could i have like uh i don't make any money from the gym i sell an online curriculum all my money is made through online youtube videos and then for anybody that wants to train with me we have open training in a garage that is not attached to the business at all was there different ideas going through your guys's head then i'm sure of how to circumnavigate oh, the yeah. bullshit they're throwing at mm-hmm. you Still, still to this day, huh? Absolutely. Did you guys ever, I mean, they did a five day suspension after that was your liquor license back or did it just get kicked down the road? Actually, what resulted to the next infraction is, um, well, they didn't actually post anything on our door that day when they said they were going to come back. They didn't, nor did they post anything on our door. They never did for five days. Okay. In our mind. So it's safe to assume they decided they not to close you down. They right. didn't suspend us. So we continued to operate. We opened up that day uh-huh. at our normal time and had a full house here, tons of people. And uh, we never did shut down. That night, or was it the next day, one of them came in and bought beer from us undercover. <gasps> Man. And, uh, Got him, dude. Yeah, I believe that was Lieutenant Paul. Um, Lieutenant Paul, you should be fucking ashamed of yourself, dude. Exactly. To, you, you know, you, you took an oath to uphold and defend our constitution and our citizens' rights, and you're doing an undercover beer operation. <laughs> like, bro, look at yourself in the mirror and realize what a fucking loser you become. And that's yeah. what these people are doing. Like, it's very easy, and it's actually empowering, because I did it as a law enforcement officer. To say, you know what, the system that I'm a part of feels broken and I have the freedom to step outside of that and I have the freedom to refuse corrupt orders. Right. Nope. You're just going to go bust a guy that sold you a beer. Like that's embarrassing to even think about, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw a lot of that. I saw cops going in and busting uh, like salons. Can you imagine using your law enforcement authority to go after young women that are painting nails? Like, what the fuck Mm -hmm. is wrong with you? Right? And I saw cops do that. um, And I'm a jujitsu guy. So my whole life is jujitsu. I've been doing it for 20 years. I saw him doing that at jujitsu academies. 
they'd go in there and like put on like training attire and then be like, ah, gotcha. You know? And it's like, dude, if you guys are going after small businesses, buying beers, getting your nails done or training on somebody's mats to make an arrest, you have to look at yourself in the mirror and ask, is what I'm doing moral and ethical? And like the politicians in the community leaders, and that's in quotes like Mayor Jenny Durkin and Governor Inslee, mm-hmm. like they may circumnavigate the law to where they tell you as a police officer, we have we have authority to ha- to ask you to do this. But regardless of authority, what about your own moral and ethical code? Because when you look at yourself in the mirror and you ask about your own moral and ethical code, you know the answer. Right. It's not busting the guys at docks for selling you a beer. You know that that's wrong. So when are you motherfuckers going to stand up for the small guy? Right. Nope. I'm just going to keep serving the government elites. Well, and don't fuck. they care about their grandchildren? That's exactly right, dude. And the other thing is, is like, you're a liquor control board agent for Snohomish County. You probably make $65,000 a year and have decent benefits. Like, that's great. You know, like, trust me, I was a cop for a long time. I like the benefits and I, and the, the, it's not a great paycheck, but it's a stable paycheck yeah. and, and that's a comfortable life to live. But if your comfortable life is being built off of others losing theirs, you got to have a problem with that. And I promise you, if you take the courage to stand up and do what's right, as opposed to what you're being told to do, man, your life only gets better. Yeah. Like I wish I knew I could have stepped out of law enforcement 10 years ago, you know, yeah. it, like COVID was a blessing because it, it opened my eyes and it led me down a path of entrepreneurship and building my own brand instead of being under the thumb of somebody else. That's awesome. And yeah. I say this all the time on the show because we have a lot of cops and first responders that listen. It's like, if you're miserable in your job, that's one thing because most cops are miserable in their job. And I'm not saying that casting shade. It's just a tough job. Sure. It's a hard yeah. job, right? Especially with this stuff that's yeah. going on. But not, if you're miserable in your job, that's one thing. But if you're uncomfortable being asked to do the things that you're asked to do, man, it's you are obligated to yourself to step away from it. And your kids and your grandchildren. And it's like we may not be in that place anymore where – you're being asked to do that on a day-to-day basis. But if you think it's not coming back and it might not be COVID, I don't know what the next thing's going to do, but the government liked their little taste of control. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was very clear through this. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, when the COVID mandates got lifted on a federal level, what that was last month, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess even the president was like, well, I'm not going to veto it because it has bipartisan support, but he wanted, he said something about how he wanted to. Sure. And it's like, keep that control. you motherfuckers like lifting, like why would you ever want to control other human beings? And there's a percentage of people that get off on controlling other human mm-hmm. beings. And it's literally the human story on repeat since the beginning of time. Someone starts to try and subjugate and control enough. People are under the thumb of another man or another government organization they get fed up and they rise against them and say fuck you we're done and then violence erupts and then everything starts over yep. you know but it's it's fascinating to me that there's all these people that enjoy being in power of other that's a dark energy like that's yeah. a gross thing to want to do because the truth is what what is empowering to people is be, becoming someone that other people like draw inspiration from and positivity from Like people should be drawn to you because of what you put out to the universe, not from I'm forcing you to do what I say. No doubt. You know, did they ever post the sticker on the door then? Uh, Not that time. Not time. Yeah, they did not at all. So they just came back multiple times and uh, undercover. So they're just building this big case against you guys. Well, because we didn't follow that, they said that they didn't. We didn't follow the liquor license suspension for that five days. We had stayed open. There was Um, confusion, though, Brad. Those papers we sent in, those constitutional papers that they treated as a phyla, we we got inner office emails. And the day that they were out here, one of the officers had written to Captain Dixon questioning, did we, in fact suspend their license 
you know, that officer with LCB was confused. He wasn't sure that they had actually done it either. We had no way to know. So we continued to operate. Um, but and, and they can say like, oh, well, you know, we didn't actually get the sticker on the door, but we talked about it and you guys knew what our intentions were. And like, you, I, you know, there, there was actually confusion within their own uh, employees. Uh, we later retrieved emails. We had access to their emails and such uh, later on. Showing that they didn't even know what the fuck they were supposed they, to do. They were confused being that they didn't post on our door if whether or not we were on, in suspension. And, and here's the thing, man. Law enforcement, we try and leave no room in the gray area, right? right. And I've been, should be. I've been part of like evictions and asset forfeiture and things of that nature. And it's like, man, if every I isn't dotted and every T isn't crossed and you don't post what you need to post and you don't inform the people of exactly or serve them the documents they need to be served, mm -hmm. everything falls apart. Right. And so from the very, very beginning, it was clear that they're not operating inside of how they are supposed to legally inform you or yep. legally post that mm -hmm. this is the restrictions. They, they are legally supposed to do that. We, we reach research to that as well. Is there ever been any closure on that? Or is that part of this ongoing case here two years later? It continues. Yep. Yep. Jesus. I think we've been with the administrative process. We've been at war with them for 27 months. And, and, and you want to know the most fascinating part about these long drawn out cases? Because again, I have a handful of friends and, and people I know in the community that are battling a similar battle as you guys. Um, one of my buddies, one of his violations was over a mask, not enforcing the mask mandate, right? He had a hearing two weeks ago and he told, he brought all of this evidence in showing here we are 27 months later that lots of prominent scientists are now saying the mask never worked. Well, it's obvious. It's so, obvious so it yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I can't say that because I'm just right. a dumb ranger that yeah, yeah. teaches people how to fight, right? Mm -hmm. But now you got people that understand this stuff like on a molecular level that can be like, hey, check it out. This is why they don't work. So he brought all of this evidence to court. And you know what they told him? We're not here to discuss the validity of the masks. We're here to discuss whether you violated and, and disobeyed our right. orders. Right. And it's like, oh, so you guys can look back and even say, hey, we were wrong. And we can, everybody can acknowledge what we were telling you to do was wrong. But because you resisted, we're still coming after you. Think mm -hmm. how dark that is. Yeah. What that is, is that's all ego. And that's a lack of humility. Right. Exactly. Because if you are getting charged for not having a mask on, and or not enforcing mass in your establishment and now the science uh, trust the science trust the science remember when they were fucking oh, yeah. yelling that at oh, us yeah. every day yep. here we are three years later and the science now shows that your stupid little face diaper didn't work mm -hmm. they should come back with a little humility and be like hey guys that was unreasonable for us to do Thank the you. pandemic was new we didn't understand all of the 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 details of it that we understand now and so we're going to drop this. Oh, no, you can't do that because the fucking U.S. government has no humility and they'll never back down out of principle. And so it's like, what are we supposed to do with this? You know what? I mean, what are what is the current state of the of the the complaints or the violations or whatever you're currently battling with them? So right now, um, because we didn't follow the. The five day suspension. We got we got basically another two week suspension. Okay. And we said, All right, we don't want to get ourselves into any more troubles that we've already been gotten into. And so we actually we took that one seriously. Yeah, we can go to Hawaii yeah. for two weeks. Yeah. So we shut this place down. We told everybody we're just gonna take it seriously this time and um on the last day of the suspension, we um, we had some beer delivered because our, our cooler was cleared out. We didn't have any more beer left. 
So, and apparently we didn't know, but you weren't supposed to have any beer delivered to this to the premises. Oh, for fuck's sakes, dude! Yeah. They, you you wonder why people go postal? <laughs> like you closed it down to the public, right? You dumb motherfuckers! Yeah. Yeah. I did what you asked me to do. Mm-hmm. Nope, not good enough. Someone saw they probably had some fucking dude in a ghillie suit across the street in the bushes. We got a beer delivery. Get them. Yep. yep. How did they find out about it? We don't to this day. We don't really know for sure. I suspect they checked with the distributors. Um, it just we shut down for fifteen days. Yeah, we, and- we didn't sell one beer. When you're going to shut down for fifteen days, there's prep work you got to do. You on got a the, lot on, of beer in sitting in your cooler, right? And I'm assuming on the 16th day when you guys are going to, and again, it goes back to these idiots not understanding how small business works. Okay. Mm-hmm. We're closed to the public for six, for 15 days on day 16. If we're going to open back up, we need product. We need inventory. Right. right. We're not selling it. We're yeah. Just receiving it. No, they knew. They, they of know course. They, yeah, of course they, they know. They know. They're, they're doing to us, you know, because. We're, we're public enemy number one. Yeah. You know, with this shit. And uh, they wanted to make, they're trying to make this statement and screw us over because the weekend was coming and we were going to be able to open up. That's our, that's our money making time, you know, is our weekends and they know it. So to be able to re up beer and be prepared that they know they're hurting us, you know, because if we don't have any beer to sell during that weekend, our first weekend open after being closed for 15 effing days, they know that they're just getting us even that one more just jab, you know? So then when they said, and I mean, if that's an illegal action, how are the distributors out working? You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. Like, let's, I, let's be yeah. serious. Mm-hmm. If that's something that is a violation, you know, um, so what did they use that to come after you for another two weeks or some bullshit? Well, that's that's actually the scary part of it is that because of that, we're actually facing revocation now. Liquor license will permanently be gone. When was that the 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 fifteen day shutdown that you guys actually abided by? Do you remember? The I mean, day? I don't need exact uh, dates, but was it like an, was, a year and a half ago or something? Uh, about a year ago. Now, about a year ago. Yeah. Okay, and so, so with this one, they were gonna come serve the actual AVN, put it on, post it on the door, and everything. We knew the day they were gonna show up. We had people show up, not as big of a crowd. They were sitting inside, and they got they saw cars here, and they got scared again. They didn't. And they didn't. Even they didn't get out of the cars this time. Yeah, they just rolled past, saw that people were here. They never came and posted it that day. They came at like seven o'clock in the morning the next day, posted everything where when they do that, by law, they have to explain everything, go over everything, do an inventory, do everything like that by the book on their part when doing this. And they didn't do that. They come sneak in the next morning, you know, so that following at the end of it, not knowing can't order beer because they didn't explain anything to us with all the, what we can and can't do in our own establishment. They, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's when, because I showed up, let the, the order in, not knowing, and uh, the drivers didn't see it because I had the door open, you know? So they came, delivered the beer, and the drivers were getting hounded. You know, they brought their... The, the state brought their lawyers and were holding meetings with the drivers saying, Did you, you, know? you, Did you, see you the delivered signs? Yeah. to a prohibited establishment. Yeah. Did you see the signs? And none of them did because, you know, you stay on that mic a little yeah. close. There yeah, we go. Sorry. Um, it's really embarrassing, man. It's bullshit. You know, it's total fucking bullshit. But, and so like, I mean, that was a year ago now, roughly. Pretty right. close. And I mean, I know the government moves like pond water and part of me think that that's by design, right? Because I don't care how resilient of a man you are, how tough you are, man, you, this feels like dragging a sled around behind you that weighs a thousand pounds because you just don't know how it's going to play out. It's, it's, we're, we're facing losing 
everything potentially if they take away our license. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. um, Do you still work at Boeing or did you switch to this for full time? Switch to this for full time. My wife still works at Boeing. Okay. Right yeah. No, but I mean, that's a leaving behind your nine to five grind to pursue something that is rooted in entrepreneurship. Man, that used to be celebrated as like the American right. dream. It felt good. You know, fuck yeah, it felt good. Like I remember that day and it's like, it, you you feel like a literal and and at least as a cop, I always say this, it's literal and a metaphorical weight because in, in police work, you're literally wearing 37 pounds of gear. And when you put your vest down for the last time, man, it's like, <sighs> I'm free, right. you know, in any of these massive corporations like Boeing or Amazon or Walmart, it's like, I get it. People need to make a living, right? But that's not the, that's not what you want to give your life energy to for the rest of your life. You want to be able to stand on your own two feet right. and build your own dream. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, put on your tinfoil hats, but I believe when you're controlled by either a major government organization or a major corporation it forces everybody to be stuck in that worker bee state. Yeah. And when you're a good little worker that's where, bee, that's where, where they want you, yeah. that's where 100%. you're controlled. Right. 100%. Yeah. And then we can tell you to get vaccinated and we can tell you to lock yourself in your house. Right. We can yeah. tell you to do what we say because we're in control of you. And then you got a small percentage of people that have figured out how to stand on their own two feet and I'm not even saying one is better than the other. Everybody's cut from a different yeah, cloth right, and, right. and and they have to figure out what lifestyle choices work for them. Really? But it's very clear that the people that have figured out how to stand on their own two feet, they fucking hate us, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, because like not only are you in a position or am I in a position where I'm comfortable telling the government to fuck yourselves, but you have a community of people that that see that and they feel that. And they, 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 they derive a sense of pride from it and a, and a sense of courage. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's why you guys are public enemy number one. We can't have two brothers that opened a facility start empowering people. Right. Get rid of them, mm-hmm. you know? Have they given you any timeline or any, like, details on, on how this is going to get litigated or when this is going to play out? Uh, I'm not the one to ask on this. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm horrible and, and, the legal well, stuff. I can address and, and, that. And here's another thing, too. Like, anything that is ongoing or that you're not comfortable bringing to the table or just stuff that right. would perhaps protect your case, be like, I don't, we're not fucking talking about that right now. Mm-hmm. And I'll say, Roger that. It's okay. I can, uh, we're right now in the appeals court in Seattle. Um, it's, the Court of Appeals, the State of Washington, Division One in Seattle. And LCB probably has an additional 30 days to respond to our documents we submitted. What is LCB? What does that stand Liquor for? Liquor Control Board. Liquor Control Board, okay. And uh, then we, once they put their paperwork in, um, after asking for a 30-day extension that was granted to them, um, we'll have 30 days to respond to theirs. And at that point, there will be a court date set in Seattle, and we'll have a hearing down there. And if we win, AVN 2, our violation 2, will be gone. If we lose, well, they could, in theory, appeal it. Knowing them, they probably will. Uh-huh. Um, if we lose... We're going to try and take it to the next level of court. Might be the Supreme Court of Washington. Um, we're not backing down, and we're going to fight it all the way. Um, Who are, who's the constitutional law group that's supporting you guys through this? Well, they don't anymore. We currently have a lawyer. I. She's got. She's very patriotic. Okay. And she's in battle herself. They're trying to disbar her. And of I'd course they are, dude. Say her name. Okay, yeah. Um, but she is. When I feel when this kind of gets to me or to Brad, I call her, and she makes me feel at ease. Um, and she's very grateful that Docs is doing this. If we win our court case, we're not just winning for Docs. You're winning for everybody. We're we're it in really it to win it for everybody. A hundred percent. And, and not not only like as a as 
something that people can just look to to draw inspiration, but also literally setting case law. Exactly. You know, mm-hmm. set a precedence. Yeah, yeah. And well, if we lose, um, which odds are we probably will, um, because nothing's gone our way it's yet. It's not that our case isn't strong. No, it's again, <laughs> I mean, it's that the it, system is rigged. Right, it is totally rigged. If we lose at that point, they start trying to revoke our license. And at that point, we have the right to go to an administrative hearing and start this process over. Can any of this stuff be taken to jury trial? That's what we're that's pushing what we're for, for, Greg. Yeah. That's what we're okay. trying to do. Because I've thought that, about that. They charged us with a crime. Yeah, exactly. We're entitled yeah. to a jury of our of peers. Our peers. Mm-hmm. Which that is, I can tell you, as someone that was inside of the world of law enforcement, jury selection is a pretty convoluted process in itself. Yes. It's not just, hey, 12 people show up and judge your case. Right. It's a it's a five hour ordeal where both sides of the, the prosecution and the defense are trying to handpick jurors that are going to go that are going to go their way, which is that in itself is like, what the fuck, dude? Right. Pick the person with the mask on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So. No, but like I, I remember I was when I was uh, with the feds, it was a, a federal marijuana case and these guys were being prosecuted. And uh, the prosecution's like, does anybody in the juror's box support legalizing marijuana? And, you know, 10 people raise their hand or whatever. And it's like, okay, I'd like to thank and excuse juror number six. I'd like to thank and excuse juror number 12. And it's like, well, hold on a second here, right? But you get so, each side gets so many, like, chances to, I forgot, is remove for cause or whatever the fuck they call it. And it's like, dude, the whole thing is a game. But I've always thought, man, like if you could get a jury trial on something like this, and this is the key to winning a jury trial, because I've sat when I was a deputy with the marshal service, I sat through federal trials every week. It's not necessarily what is right or what is wrong on the books. It's simply make those jurors see you as a human being and someone they hold compassion for. Sure. And it's like, and I'm not saying that that's a game. What that is, is that's just bringing your authentic self to court and showing these people like, yeah, I'm not this big evil grandma killer that was like out to get people sick. We're trying to raise our family. We're trying to feed our children. Mm-hmm. And, and even more importantly, we try, we tried to abide by the things that were asked of us. Like we literally shut down for the two weeks. They told us to shut down. Like this is very clearly not a case of us being involved in any sort of criminality or any criminal syndicate or whatever they're trying to fucking say you're involved with. This is simply a case of because we initially kind of pushed back, they've turned it into a big dick contest Mm -hmm. and now they're trying to take my livelihood away. And you got to ask yourself as a member of the jury, like does this, does the things that we did even if you think they were incorrect or maybe we made a mistake in the beginning, does that rise to the level of where we should have our entire livelihood stripped from us? Exactly. Because that's what they want to do to us. Right. You know? No, I think a jury trial should be, it should be mandatory. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Have they said anything about that? Like, oh, you're going to get your case overheard by judge so-and-so. Well, who is judge so-and-so? He's one man. You know? The attorney general representative that's representing um, liquor control, he made a comment that the administrative administrative process, they do not have jury trials. But yet they will charge my entire family with a crime. crime. Allegedly endangering public safety and there's no victim. Yeah, yeah I know. Victimless How, that crimes. That doesn't fly. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and another thing is that uh, typically in, in victimless crimes outside of domestic violence, yeah. like uh, the state of Washington allows the state to be the victim, right? Where 
because very often in domestic violence, a young female that has feelings for this guy that's beating her, she won't be the victim and file charges against him. So if the state is able to see like and put together through evidence that this guy is hurting this girl, we're going to take the case and we're going to come after you. Right. But outside of that, the state is not supposed to be the victim of a crime. That's, that's not our role. That's not something that we can even be capable of, of holding. For example, like indecent exposure, like as a police officer, I can't tell you how many dicks I saw because the homeless drug addicts in Seattle, it's just, it's a circus down there. Right? Yeah, sure. So if you got some homeless guy that's naked waving his dick around, I can't charge that guy with indecent exposure because I am an agent of the state and I can't be who charges you because that's a, until somebody, you know, someone's seven-year-old daughter's walking into gymnastics practice and looks over and sees that guy. Now we have a crime because we have a victim wow. and seven-year-old girls aren't supposed to see grown ass men waving their dick around. So it makes sense, right? It, right? The law enforcement arm of the government is not supposed to be the victim. And again, like if you guys don't have, if, if you don't have anybody that was a victim of this public endangerment, it seems like that case would be pretty hard to hold up in court, yeah. Yeah. you know, right. that's crazy, dude. Yeah, and, and I can tell you too, from when I was with, when I was a deputy doing a lot of court cases, man, it's a crap shoot. And I remember thinking this at the time, man, our judicial system is broken because guys get arrested for their crime. The case agent is who makes the case against them. And then an attorney or in the feds, it's called an AUSA. That's what the prosecutors are called. They pick up the case. You go to arraignment and at arraignment, the case gets randomly assigned to a judge. And some of the judges are hardcore conservatives. And some of them are radical left-leaning liberals. And they don't even see things through remotely the same lens. And I've seen, there was a guy, there was a judge who was like 80 years old because federal judges is a lifetime appointment. His name was Judge Real in Los Angeles, California. I don't care who you were. I don't care what your crime was. You're getting a maximum sentence, mm. period. And that dude would hammer everybody. And then you go to the other side of the fence and it's like a, a super like liberal forgiving judge. It's like, well, the reason this guy committed this crime is because he was beaten as a child <laughs> and we have to show forgiveness to this. And like, I'm going to give this guy time served. And it's like, I'm not even necessarily saying one is right and one is wrong. But when you can see two people go into the judicial system on the same charges yeah. and one guy gets nothing totally and one guy gets outcomes. 15 years, man, we got a fucking problem. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the solution is, but something doesn't feel right, right you know and most people that haven't been exposed to massive amounts of court proceedings they don't understand that it's a literal crap shoot and and again and i'm not saying this to you guys to like try and like instill more fear or give you guys because it could go the other way as well yeah. a lot of what's going to come down the pipe from this just base is going to be based on the morals and the values of the guy sitting on the bench yeah, yeah. you know and, and, and to give you hope, there are still some good ones out there. That's good. You know? Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But what a weird thing right. that the future of your lives comes down to one man's decision. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And if he's a, a George Soros bought and paid for pussy, you guys are fucked. Yep. And if it's a guy that has some some honor and some integrity and, 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 and has some de a decent moral compass, you guys will be thriving again. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. um so what else i mean I, I, you got a stack of papers like right I've, yeah, I've i just, mean we could go I, li I like to fucking talk as you guys have probably yeah. ascertained <laughs> right. but uh anything that you think is important any information that you would like to share any uh any guidance and other businesses that are going through this like it's just a conversation take it wherever you guys would like sure. well i think we should invite there are many businesses I believe that are being prosecuted still as a result of COVID. We recently discovered through, we had a gentleman that worked with us, not a lawyer, but he worked with us on the administrative level of this battle with the first, the second AVM. 
And he recently discovered there's a restaurant bar that got the COVID suspension for five days or paid the fine of $500. They paid it. But now they are in court actively going after the state for wrongfully imposing that penalty on them. So we aren't the only ones out here. There's others. I'd like to make a call to anybody out there that knows other businesses, taverns, restaurants, bars, that are still being prosecuted by the Liquor Control Board um, to let us know. We're Docks Riverside Tap House in Machias, which is North Snohomish, the city of. Um, let us know if you know of others because knowledge is power. Yeah, for sure. And the more we talk, the better chance we'll all have of correcting the wrongs that have been done to all of us. Okay. Um, I will put I will put whatever email you decide to okay. be the point of contact for you guys. All right. Do you have one off the top of your head that you want to use for that? I could use my well, well, we can use Docs, Docs Riverside Tap House at gmail.com. Okay, so I will also put that in the show notes below. Okay. So anybody that hears this, and, and that's a perfect point because the government hates when you come after, you, you counter sue them yeah. and, and you come after them just like they're coming after you and, and you make it so miserable that it becomes a, a battle of attrition. Yeah. And it's like, fuck, man, these guys are charging us with all of this. And now they're counter suing us. And there's all this litigation. And you drag it on to a point where hopefully they just say, oh, right, enough is enough. Yeah. Like, are you guys familiar with Pete Serrano with the Silent oh, yeah. Majority oh, yeah. Foundation? Yep. Yep. And so, um, you know, I talk, he did the show. I've talked to him over the years here and there. Um, and then Mike Yoder, do you know who that is? It's, a, it's another, so him and Pete work together, but Mike is, he lives on the other side of the country. Their whole thing is like constitutional law and building cases to go after the government that are trying to fuck the small guy, you know? And and talking to them, that's one thing they said. It's like, man, it, it does. It becomes a battle of attrition. And if you if we just hire legal counsel when they're coming after us to try and defend ourselves, man, I've been a fighter my whole life. Like when you're, when you lock the cage door or you go on the jujitsu mat, I don't want to be defending myself in a fight. Mm -hmm. I want to carry the initiative and I want to be on the offense because anytime you're defending yourself in a fight, you're losing the fight. That's right. And it's the same thing with this and, and talking to those guys, that's what I was told. They're like, Hey, if we have to litigate for you, because they're trying to shut your business down. We don't litigate to say, hey, we're here to come up with a solution so Greg can keep his gym open. He goes, fuck no, that's not how we litigate. We litigate to burn those motherfuckers to the ground and counter sue the shit out of them for fucking your life. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's the mentality that us small business owners have to have. It's like, I'm not pandering to you. I'm not gonna come to you and be like, please. It's like, if you wanna fight, we can give you a fight or what is going to serve all parties involved better is if they just leave you the fuck alone. Right. You know, and that's what I, that's what I, you know, and again, I'm not, I'm sure next week I'll go hard on my case cause I'm going to get a lot of the details this afternoon. But one thing that I said, I said, listen, I have a bunch of members here that come here for their health and their fitness. I'm making good money as an entrepreneur and the county and the state rapes me on fucking taxes, and you guys are making a bunch of money off of me running a successful right. business. Yeah. yeah, same with this place. Yeah, everybody's winning right now. Yeah, right, just like uh-huh. here. Right. You, this place is packed. You guys are selling beer all night, and fuck, you know, small businesses are getting raped mm-hmm. on all of our taxes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not even complaining damage. about that right now because that's the system that we're stuck in. Maybe we address that someday and we fix that. But as it sits right now. Every dollar that you guys make here, the state is profiting from. So, hey, dummy, why do you fucking want to shut down someone that's earning you money? Kind of makes you wonder. You know? And it's like, if if, if these numbskulls can wrap their head around that concept, it's like, if you just 
can back down and say, hey, you know what? All that stuff that we kind of were throwing at you guys a couple years ago, we're willing to just kind of call it call it neutral. You know, we'll we'll just each side will just lower our flags and walk away. There doesn't even have to be a winner or a loser. Let's just say this isn't a fight worth having. Now everybody wins. Why wouldn't you want that? Right, right. You know, and so, and what I was told is like, yeah, that's that's exactly our mindset too. Like we we want everybody to win here. I said, okay, cool. I like, hope that's where it goes. Yeah. You know, no doubt. But but again, like for, so. If you can look at the situation detached emotionally and understand if both sides lower their flags and just walk away that everybody wins, then you have to draw the conclusion like this is malicious. Mm -hmm. really this is, is no longer really is. this is no yeah. longer about law or order. It's literally, you know what? I, I'm fuck those guys. They didn't listen to us and we're gonna keep coming. Yep. You know? Yep. And what a childish way to 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 litigate or to, to push policy, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Fuck, dude. I'm fired up. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, there, dude, there's a big part of me that thinks, like, we as a nation <clears throat> will have to see conflict at some point. Yeah. I've, because I just don't, I, you know, like, how many more yeah. bullshit things like this are people willing to take mm -hmm. before someone says, you know what? This is my turn to weld up my bulldozer and go drive it through city council, you know? Well, yeah. What, what happens with the next, the next time this fucking happens uh, sooner or you later, sooner or later, someone is going to say, I have fucking had it with you yeah, guys you and resort it. to violence. Right. But the thing is, I think there's enough people. I think, I think we might be sitting on the powder keg and maybe we're not there right now, but clearly we're moving towards that oh, direction yeah. to where, and I don't know, eh, fuck, it could be Doc's Riverside Tap House or it could be something on the other side of the country. But at some point, people are going to get so fed up that when one man pops, people are going to support him. Mm -hmm. And it's like, dude, well, you got 40 guys there with body armor and AR-15s. How do you want to move forward with this? I know how the cops want to move forward with it. They don't want to touch a problem like that with a 10-foot pole. Right. You know? And then, so what are the policymakers going to come and get involved? Like, where does this go? And it's like, dude, remember the Bundy Ranch? Yeah, yeah, yeah I was going to bring that up. Yeah, yeah. And, and that was like the first time we saw where the government was like, "Fuck, this might not be a fight worth having." Mm -hmm. I think they need to come to that conclusion more often than not. This isn't a fight worth having, and we, the people, still hold the power. Most that concept is lost on most government agencies, but make no mistake about it. It just comes down to math. Like we hold the power. Sure. And if you can make them respect that notion again, that's kind of, that is what is going to set this, our country free again. Mm -hmm. But right now, a lot of people are under the, the misconception that big government is in charge of everything. It's right. like, well, it doesn't help that we've been getting shadow banned on every platform. For a long time prior to COVID even starting. Of course. You know, with, with Facebook to YouTube to whatever, you know, and it, it became an epidemic of people just getting purged or you're just in your own little bubble. You're not getting sent out to anybody else new, you know, uh, to be able to hear your message. Um, so, th yeah, it's this has been going on, but this was their perfect test platform. For sure. To see what people will, how they would react to all this with COVID. Well, and, and make no mistake about it. All of the censorship, all of the shadow banning, it's misinformation. That misinformation, that was never propagated to stop you from saying something that was either like anti-vaccine related. Like we would really hate for that message to get out there. And then somebody didn't take a vaccine and now they're going to get sick. The censorship was never about protecting people. The censorship was about all of the people like us that share the same mentality. They didn't want us to have strength in numbers. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. look at oh, this yeah. post about taking a, a forced vaccine. Man, mm -hmm. it has 145,000 likes and 2,600 comments. Like, that's empowering because that shows like every one of those likes is a person and a lot of people are obviously fed up with the bullshit. Yep, they didn't okay. want to see people right. 
have that kind of empowerment through social media. So instead of allowing that to move forward, you got to delete that. The same thing with my YouTube, yep. you know, like fuck YouTube and this will be up on YouTube. <laughs> it, it, here's the funny thing though, is like YouTube used to, to shadow ban me. They shut my account down on several occasions for misinformation, right? But it seems like everybody's kind of pumping the brakes on that right now. And it's probably because Elon Musk right. took over Twitter, Twitter and is now changing the landscape of what freedom on the internet looks like. And maybe some of these other companies are, are taking a look because let's be honest, all of these tech giants, right? At the end of the day, they're probably going to be on whatever side makes them more money. And I'm not yeah, even saying there's anything sure. wrong with that, right? Mm -hmm. Like as, as, as entrepreneurs, that's the overall goal. But at the same time, when they just sided with corruption, just because they thought that was the, the, the most advantageous position yeah. for their companies to hold. All right, you motherfuckers. Yeah. You know, it, someday, at some point, people are going to start being held accountable. And that's why I have my fucking giant beheading axe for. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, how gross it is, is it that like, a small tavern on the, on the fucking pill truck river they're censoring you guys, you know, it's like every single person they tried to isolate you and make you feel alone. Absolutely. And that was by design. No, it, where was the first, you know, revolution planned, you know, it was <laughs> yeah, in a fucking no. tavern, you know, that's, they wanted to shut down people's voices from being able to uprise, gather, fucking put your mask on, so, shut the fuck up and just do as you're told. Yeah, That's how this really was. And they were telling you, go get the jab. You won't get sick. Our government officials were saying this on live fucking television. Bro, the Dude. winter of death is coming. Yeah, like, this is a vac. This is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I we mean, were public enemy number fucking one. Yeah. You talk about that. The other side hating us. And they did. They were telling us to go fucking die. Yeah. Go kill yourself. Isn't you that know? nuts, dude? I hope you die. You know, like, that's and, fucked and, up. And again, all you fucking pussies that are telling men like us over Instagram that I hope you die, come and say that to my fucking right. face. Well, I dare you. Now they're all changing their minds. Of course they they're are, like, oh, dude. I'm sorry, you know, like, uh, I didn't really mean it. Oh, know? because, like, now <laughs> prominent scientists are saying natural immunity is actually showing to That's outperform the, the vaccination. Yeah. Oh, Duh. we're all shocked. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm just a dumb, dumb Neanderthal knuckle dragger, <laughs> but it's like, what, what a crazy concept to think that the human immune system could react to something better than some man-made bullshit. Right. Like how egotistical it are we? It didn't you do know? anything they said it was going to do. Nothing. Uh, it not didn't a, do anything. And, and no. Lord knows what side effects are going to be coming down the pipeline. And I think we've seen some. We've but, seen a lot, bro. But a lot. fucking A, man. It's scary. And, and dude, for them to still be like one of my best friends is a physician. And uh, he started recommending to his to his patients like, dude, if you're a young, healthy person, don't get the COVID vaccine. You don't need it. Like the data doesn't support you needing it. Right. And you know what? All the other doctors and all the other nurses are like, dude, are you really saying that? He's like, yeah. And you should be too. I know, but fuck man. Like, mm. dude, they're going to come after you. And, 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 and it's like, we're a corporation. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a doctor can't even say his opinion on it. It's like, everybody has to be on the same narrative, yeah. forcing everybody to do this. Mm -hmm. And it was. I know. We were being attacked on every our government, our media, fucking our yeah, our supposed doctors that we're supposed to trust, you know, with our health and everything in our lives. Like we're telling us that we have to fucking do this. And bro, knowing like knowing full well that they were wrong. And the and the interesting part is like COVID was as dangerous as the flu, give or take, mm -hmm. right? I've never taken a flu vaccine in my whole my entire life because getting sick isn't something that I'm that intimidated over. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, maybe I've fucking been lucky, but at the end of the day, like I make my decision if I want to get the flu vaccine or not. And I've just decided it's never been something that I need. No one ever gave a fuck ever. Hey, Greg, did you get your flu vaccine? Mm -hmm. No. Oh, right. Dude, did you hear that? He didn't get his flu vaccine. Don't train with him. 
Get Don't be Graham, yeah, Graham yeah. Get Unfollow him on Instagram. <laughs> he didn't get a flu vaccine. <laughs> and all these dumb motherfuckers just fell for that narrative yeah. to where mm-hmm. if you implement personal choice, you're now somehow the bad guy. Mm-hmm. That's never been part of our society before. Now there's there are people that have always been like you know, the hardcore anti-vaxxers that's like, you're not putting anything in my baby. I'm not getting any vaccines. And those people used to be painted kind of as crazies, right? Bro, I'm one of those people now. Like, I wouldn't do it either. Yeah, yeah, your your fucking absolute inability to show reasonableness on what we put into our bodies has now made me look back and be like, maybe I shouldn't have put anything in my fucking children. Yeah. You know, like luckily we had a pediatrician that like when my daughters were young, his rule, he goes, I'm not putting anything in your kids that hasn't been on the market for over 30 years. He goes, that's my, my cutoff as a pediatrician, because without 30 years of clinical data or, or people actually using this, I shouldn't be comfortable putting that into your children. And at the time I was like, that sounds very reasonable. You know, I bet people think he's a kook. There's probably some people who are like, Dude, he didn't give this. He didn't give that. But I'm very grateful that that, that was the guidance of someone that I'm putting trust in. Sure. Right. Sure. And now here we are, you know, a few years later, I'm like, I'm not putting any of your shit in my kids anymore ever again. And maybe I'm crazy. Right. But, uh, you know, what, what conclusions do you expect people to draw when you absolutely just try and limit free choice? and make them just basically become a slave to your system. I, I've told people this for years now. It's like, right now, I'm enjoying a Pike Place coffee from Starbucks. Now, a lot of my listeners are saying, what the fuck are you supporting those <laughs> radical liberals for? Oh, and I'm sorry, all right? Once Black Rifle goes into Lake Stevens, I'll change over. <laughs> but I have a coffee every morning. I like coffee. Sure. If a government agent walked through that door right now and set down a coffee and said, Greg, Take a sip of this coffee or else I'm drawing and we're fighting to the death because you don't have the authority to tell me what to put in my body, regardless whether I think it's good, whether I think it's bad, whether I like it, whether I don't like it. At the end of the day, it's personal choice, right? right? Mm -hmm. You limit personal choice. Now we have a fucking problem. And uh, I think the reason that they're backing off a lot of the COVID stuff right now is because they realized, man, the pendulum's swinging. More and more people are starting to fall on not whether COVID, all this bullshit was right or wrong, but that people need to be afforded personal choice. Absolutely. And they they tried to take people implementing personal choice and make them the enemy. And it worked for a while and everybody hated each other. And maybe I'm just hope too hopeful, but it seems like both sides of the fence. I mean, I'm seeing like these radical left-leaning liberal talk show hosts that are on TV saying, yeah, saying like, (laughs) dude, what the fuck is all of this? Mm -hmm. John Stewart was talking about it. You know, he's like, oh, you mean the coronavirus that wasn't man-made? Right. That just happened to uh, a pangolin kissed a bat (laughs) right on the outside wall of the Wuhan (laughs) coronavirus lab. And that's just by chance. That's very good. Yeah, like like verbatim. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Dude, people are starting to see this for what it is. And uh, I think an important thing is like a lot of us have, do you guys follow Andy Frisella? Do you listen to him at all? Dude, you should. Yeah. He yeah. is, uh, he's become a friend of mine over the years. And his thing is he, he's an entrepreneur. He's built a very successful business. That's where he became like a public person. But his whole, his whole message now is freedom. Cause he's like, without freedom, you can't be an entrepreneur. Right. Without freedom, you can't build a business. You can't build a brand. So freedom comes first. And then all the stuff on how to win financially, all that stuff comes second, right? But one thing that he's talked about a lot on his show, he's like, man, I know this is hard for us to accept, but all the people that called us baby killers, all the people that thought you were killing, we were were killing your grandma, the people that are sending you messages on Facebook saying, fuck Doc's Tavern, I hope you die. The truth is they were all victims of a massive propaganda campaign. They were were saying, fuck you. Because they literally believed in their heart that you guys are heartless bastards yeah. mm-hmm. 
that are that are gonna make your community members get sick and die. Yeah, we right. don't care about anybody. Yeah, but exactly. Making a profit, and it's, it yeah. you know the saying goes, perception is reality. Yeah. In those people's hearts, they watch CNN and then they see that Doc's Tavern is selling beers. Man, fuck Doc's Tavern, right? Mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But those people aren't our enemy. Right. Those people are victims, just like we've yeah. all been victims. Sure. Yeah. And man, we need to like, uh, in the words of August Burns Red, I've become friends with that band. Like they have a verse that says, save your fury for the guilty ones. Right. Right. And the guilty ones aren't the guys that sent you a mean message on Facebook. It's the guys that orchestrated this at the top. Mm -hmm. And I think more and more people are becoming aware that did fall into that narrative that they got duped. Yeah. You know? And And we're seeing it. They're starting to wake up, man. And the more people that wake up, the more conversations like this that are had. Uh, we got to start a war in Ukraine. Let's, 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 <laughs> yeah. let's do a mass distraction, please. Exactly, yeah. dude. Yeah. Fuck, dude, don't get me started on Ukraine, man. <laughs> Sorry, bro, but that's I, exactly what I, I'm having. Happen. A, I'm, I'm enjoying like, myself right now. <laughs> 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 no, but I mean, what a fucking crazy thing. Like, Ukraine is not part of the United Nations. Like it's a money laundering, it's a money laundering scheme and everybody fucking sees it now. Yeah. And you know, like, uh, there's a group in Congress. It's like, do we want to do an audit of all the taxpayers dollars yeah, yeah. All gone. That, yeah. that, that went to Ukraine? Yeah. And there are people that think that's unreasonable. Like you gave guys like us work day in and day out. You guys steal our money through threat of incarceration. Right. Let's just say what the IRS is. Mm. Give us money or we're putting you in a cage. And then you send our money to this foreign war and you can't even, and it's unreasonable yeah. for us to want to see where it goes. Right. Fuck, man. It's nuts, well, dude. Yeah. Hundreds yeah. of millions of people coming through our Damn. southern border. Well, and bro, that's a, yeah, th- there you go. Let's go off on that rant because we live in Washington state. Oh, when's the last time you guys have been to downtown Seattle? You probably it's avoid that a long time. That's what I'm saying. Right? You probably avoid that place like the plague. Like yeah. I do, yeah. man, growing up, like being a little skater kid at Snohomish high school, we'd take the bus down there and yeah, go skate right. downtown. We love yeah. going down there and down like dude, the waterfront and Pike's place. Like, dude, that place was fucking incredible. Yeah. It was a fun city to grow up in. Mm-hmm. And this, I mean, I'm 42. It's not like back when I was your age, right. but it kind of is. Back yeah. when I was your age, I could fucking go to Seattle on a bus as a 15-year-old, 14-year-old kid and have fun. Yeah. My daughter's 14. I wouldn't let her spend a day in Seattle if you gave me a million dollars. Yeah. Our fucking... Not only is it just overran by drugs and crime, but dude, it's like our infrastructure is shit. Like everything is falling apart in this state. Yep. And we have all of these fucking government agents. We have all this, all of these resources, all of these tax dollars, and they want to spend it going after guys like us. Right. Like what, what, what are we fucking talking about here? Yeah. Yep. The state is in shambles. Seattle's actually one of the uh, petty crime. I think it is now the petty crime capital of the country I wouldn't doubt it. so we're not no. we're not leading in murders and rapes but we are leading in like car prowls right. and and petty thefts because every single drug addict down there is conducting crime to get to fulfill their next fix right. and i saw it day in and day out when i worked down there nope that's not important Let's go after a guy that's so like, mm-hmm. I, I'll take you yeah. right now. Right. Like we could leave Doc's Tavern and in an hour, we could be buying heroin on the streets of Seattle. Sure. I promise you. Yeah. Hey, no, no problem. We're not worried about that. But fucking Doc's Tavern sold a guy a beer. Right. Perfectly okay for Chop or Chaz or whatever it takes. Yeah, dude. City blocks. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, and now this fucking state has banned the sale of automatic rifles. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Like yeah. it's getting, it's fucking <laughs> keep pushing. You know what I mean? It's like, I say it almost every episode. It's like, we change the trajectory of our country by the bullet or by the ballot. And the ballot seems like a more reasonable option. You know, again, like to go back to what we said not too long ago, like, I don't want to live in another war torn shithole. That's right. not the life I want right. my children to live. A million percent. But the fucking ballot doesn't even seem to be recognized anymore. Yeah. You know, there is no way that the over that the 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 majority of our citizens 
wanted to have the ability to buy a Ruger 1022 rifle taken from them. Oh, but I they, don't believe that either. But they've done it. Yep. You know? <clears throat> While simultaneously all these cocksuckers are being protected by teams of armed men. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Because because <laughs> I used to be one of those armed men doing protection details for government officials, you know? Uh, dude, I was thinking about this the other night. It would be interesting to see what the percentages are of people that get either robbed or have violence perpetrated against them. What demographic of people those are, right? Mm -hmm. Because if all of these high ranking rich government officials say, I need a 16 man team with AR 15s to protect me. Well, statistically, I promise you they are the least targeted group of people. So if you acknowledge that that's a good tool for protecting you and your family, even though you're less likely to be targeted, how can you say like, oh, this guy's a plumber that lives off a of Rainier Ave in Seattle and he lives in an apartment complex that gets targeted all the time. Yeah. He can't have it though. Right. Even though he's a hundred times more likely to be put in a situation where he needs to defend himself. No, no, no. Yeah. You don't get it, but we do because it's a great tool for protecting yourself and your family. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I, I don't understand how all these politicians stand on their platform and say, we don't need weapons of war in our street. Motherfucker, your protection detail has 25 of them right now. Right, right. So are we in a war zone or are we not in a war zone? Because you have them. And bro, I know I'm the fucking nut job, but I think, I think citizens should be able to have any type of munitions or firearms that any policing body that can use them to enforce the law has here. Right. You know, I agree. Otherwise, that's the, what we were really. Yeah. The second amendment was all about. Protecting no, 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 no. The second amendment was so people could hunt deer. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's such a, that's such a stupid concept. It's like man has been killing animal to feed himself since the dawn of mankind. All right. We don't need your fucking constitution to talk to us about how we acquire meat. Shut the fuck yeah, up. Right, right. Remember our fucking demented president saying, oh, I don't think deer have wear Kevlar vests. <laughs> <That's> like, <laughs> dude. Ah, all right, we're going off on tangents. Yeah. But through, that's what the, that's what makes the show fun. You yeah, know? Uh, <clears throat> again, people like just sitting down and hearing real conversation especially a group of men. They're fed up with all the bullshit because everybody is, you know, luckily Apple and Spotify don't sponsor or don't uh, censor freedom. That's good. Yeah, dude, it's good. For sure. Are are you on rumble? No, dude, I got on rumble when YouTube shut me down and then dude, I get zero engagement on rumble, you know? Um, I don't know. Maybe I should get. Is, is, that was a year ago or so, too, though. So yeah, maybe Rumble's like grown. Try it again. Okay. I'm on Rumble quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot it of seems people to be are gaining steam switching over that. now because YouTube is is garbage. It's of course. Cool. Like you were saying, though, it's, it's starting to go the other way a little bit, though, now, too, where they're starting to allow more. more. Be a little bit squeezed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, dude, my, my, one of my business partners, his name's Tobin Folk. He was in the Rangers with me back in the day. That's where we met, and we've stayed friends this whole time. He made a YouTube video called the, uh, fuck, I forget what it's called, but it's basically like the uniform of a guerrilla fighter, right? And he talks about the pros and cons of what a what an insurgent or what a guerrilla fighter would wear, right? Because what do you see most men that are like pro 2A guys, it's like, you know, they're all camied out and they're in body armor. And it's like, he's like, you got to think about if you're ever part of an insurgency, one of the, one of the biggest benefits of being part of an insurgency is blending in with the local populace. That's why insurgencies are so hard to defeat because you don't know who your enemy is and who your enemy isn't until they're actively fighting you. And then the second they're not actively fighting you, it goes back to who's good guys and who's bad guys, Mm -hmm. you know? And so he just made a video explaining this and bro, he fought in Iraq and Afghanistan with me for years. Like that dude understands all of this stuff to a T. Dude, he got a call from the FBI and the FBI interviewed him because you're teaching people about an insurgency on YouTube. 
Like, really? yeah, that's a real, I mean, that's, that's the reality of the world we're living in. A guy that did fucking like 10 deployments with special operations, risking his life, learning how insurgencies work up close and personal. And then if you tell Americans about that, mm-hmm. we're going to come and see what you're, what's up with you, you know, fuck the FBI, dude, yeah, no doubt. you know, it kind of makes you wonder how much they're surveilling people. Like I think they're surveilling, like bro. I think I, I, I yeah, all the time. And again, like maybe I'm just becoming a, a crazy old man, but dude, I Ooh. think they're probably listening to everything. It's happening. I oh, think yeah. your phone, sure. I think they're listening to your phone 24 seven AI categorizing. Yeah. Everybody. And bro, I've had conversations behind closed doors that will probably put me in a fucking cage, <laughs> but yeah. I wonder how they articulate that. Hey, we, we, gra- we grab this from a phone call or from a, uh, surveilling your phone and not just a phone. Like when I was with the feds, we would get what were called phone orders where a judge signs off on, Hey, you can track this guy based on his phone. Right. Mm -hmm. And now you have legal authority to use his phone to help you with this, with this specific case. I wonder how it'll show up in court when they start just pulling evidence to put cases together mm-hmm. based on just random surveillance, you know? Oh, and dude, yeah. all of these guys that become whistleblowers and are like, Hey dude, the government surveils you here. The government surveils right. you there. They're listening to all your phone calls. They're reading all your emails. Anytime someone comes forward with like knowledge about that, bro, that dude needs to flee the country because yeah. they're coming yeah. after him. Mm-hmm. You know, those dudes should be fucking revered as heroes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, all right, dude. Well, we're coming up on two hours yep. again. Like, let's, like I said, is, is there any part of this case or part of this, um, just ordeal or a message that you want to get out to people? I mean, there's other companies going through the same thing. We've already, we went through this, but we need to build a coalition. You know, we should have been doing this a long time ago now. And when this was all going down, but we we've had support groups we were holding meetings here you know and just as time goes on and people forget you know people go back to getting to their normal lives and forgetting that this shit happened you know and the biggest thing we keep saying that it could happen again and that we need to fucking fight back now before that happens yeah you know we need to get more, more companies in the state and around the country to fucking fight back and do what we're doing. But a lot of us, like ourselves, it's day to day, you know, as far as money goes and fucking fighting this fucking fight, you know, it ain't fucking easy, you know, and <laughs> our family, we weren't expecting this shit. Of course know, not. Opened, yeah. Like it, it, we were fucking thrust into it. Like we were saying, we were trying to fix it up, either flip it or fucking like, or, or lease it out to somebody that knew it, how the fuck to run a bar. Yeah. We, kind of, we had never done that. Because of COVID, we were kind of forced to stick like, with it. And we're glad we did. Don't get us wrong. We, we love the community. We love loved running the bar. It's awesome. But it, uh, I frankly, I, I, I'm a fucking introvert. You know? Yeah. This has fucking pushed me outside of my, my norms <laughs> one million fucking percent. You know? But I am so fucking happy that I did it. Because I have met so many fucking awesome people here. Um, the community yeah, here is family. embraced We're family us, here now. you know, and really taken us in and, and respected what we did. Yeah. Even though we were trying to comply at the beginning of all this shit. And then eventually they just kept moving the goalpost. Yeah. They keep fucking like just pulling that fucking football out from, you know, and just the whole Charlie Brown, you know, just never fucking like it's never going to end unless we do stand up and tell them to go fuck themselves for sure man you know mm-hmm. so that's what we it boiled down to um you know he what are is there is there an email or uh a, a, an office that listeners can write in and and share their like disdain yeah, for what's happening absolutely. yeah the docs riverside tap house no 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 i mean like to to blast the people that are coming after you because that's always a good oh, one uh, like <laughs> like when when l and i came after me Every email that came through, I would then take the email it came from 
and sign up for a Pornhub account. Like shit like that, right? Like you want to play stupid fucking games? Let's just get as stupid as possible. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if there's anyone that needs an, an unreasonable amount of hate coming their sure. way or just okay. being told to fuck off, we can put that in the show notes yep. too because like, bro, the power of the internet is real. Yeah, we can give some content. And it's, sure. uh, yep. it's, it's fun to, to throw this shit back at people too because... Man, like energy is a real thing, right? And they want to they want to put negative energy on you guys. And again, we talked about it's like you feel that weight of this mm-hmm. negative vibration that's surrounding you. Yeah. Um, and again, there's a, a lot of times when it's like you know you you fight hate with love, and it's like, but but there are there are times when you fight darkness with an even darker energy. And I've been saying that, like we've been saying that since we were young rangers. It's like, dude, Al Qaeda in Iraq and these motherfuckers that are burning people alive and beheading people is like, you want to think you're you're a fucking savage? I'll show you what a savage is because I can go to your level too, you know? And like, that's an important part of being a man. It's like, you get pushed far enough. Yep. I can play in whatever fucking realm you want to play in. Yep. And so it's like, sure, it can be kind of fun and, and just, just kind of, uh, you know, lighthearted to, to sign up government agents with Pornhub accounts sure. but but the other side is it's like they're projecting a bunch of hate on you guys yeah. it's time for America to start, to start showing them that you guys are the motherfuckers mm-hmm. you know and we can show them the disdain and the fucking discomfort that they've been projecting on you guys the whole time oh, yeah. and so um, yeah anything else before we wrap this up then I was just gonna say there, there's a lot of boring details in these documents maybe what I can do for other bar owners, restaurant owners, so they can see our argument and what we're doing with our appeal. Um, I can put some bullet points maybe in your notes. Okay. This. If yeah. so, they have reference. And maybe if they want to reciprocate, if they have other ideas for us. Got it. Really appreciate it. For sure. So I will put all that contact information in the uh, in the show notes below. I'll get this. Uh, I'll do all this produ- the production tomorrow, so I'll give you guys a day to put that together. Right. But most importantly, like if if you are listening to this show and you are local, come down here and have a beer with these guys. Come and support the business in person. Show them like that you appreciate people that are standing up, and and just at the end of the day, this fight is about community more than anything and sticking together and supporting each other. So if a small business is being targeted by the government machine that just wants to grind you guys to dust, if the community rallies around you guys, that's the biggest thing to put a stop to this. And, uh, you guys are located in Machias, Washington, right here on the Pilchuck river, cool little small place. And if you're local, just make a priority, come here and, and, and have a drink one night. Do you guys do, do do you guys do food at all, or is it just just drinks? We have snacks. Yeah, yeah. Do food trucks every food Friday trucks. and Saturday. Okay, food yeah. trucks every Friday and Saturday. Yeah. So come here, have a fucking uh, a pokey bowl, yeah. and yeah. Uh, you can order a pizza, have it delivered, whatever. Too. There you go, yeah. and and just come and, and show support and, and help these guys out because at the end of the day, that's what this is going to take to win. So. Thank you very much. All good to go? Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. It's a good show. It'll be well received by people because, again, everyone is sick of the bullshit. And the more people that push back, the stronger this message gets. So I appreciate you guys. Thank, yep. thank, thank you, you Greg. Man.